Sami and Yotam, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Let's talk about food now and how it's become a major part of the zeitgeist. Time magazine devotes its cover to it, the gods of food. Meet the people who influence what and how you eat. And sure enough, Otto Lenghi, Otam, Yotam and Sami are inside. The world is getting so small at the moment and people are looking for the next thing all the time. And I think this is why you see different kind of parts of the world shine in their cuisine because, you know, they have the platform to do it. People really want to show off their culture through their food because it's the one identifying feature that any person in another place can understand. So it's an international language, so it's very easy to, to talk this language. It, it's also uh, a way to um, express yourself and sh basically show off. Yeah. But what about the food? What about hummus? There's a bit of an argument between Israelis and Jews, Arabs and Palestinians over who owns hummus. Yeah. And who owns the falafel sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> it's so difficult because in the Middle East, as people normally know, everything is very fraught and uh, with emotions, with history, and the food still you know, has the same kind of treatment. You know, people see their food as part of their heritage. And uh, just as they see the land and the history and the stories, so you know, with with food, they can argue, you know, who was the first to eat hummus or make hummus, and who makes the best falafel, whether it's Jews or Arabs. So it becomes political immediately, and uh, it it can become difficult, but it, it can also be fun. If you go back to his, uh, in history, you will never find out. I, I, I think they, it's Arabs. Really? <laughs> okay, well that's magnanimous of you. Do people project onto you? their politics? Do they see you somehow as peacemakers through food, as a bridge builder? Um, people see hope. People see this kind of weird connection between a Jew and a, and a Muslim. Um, and it gives them somehow, I don't know, like a ray of light yeah. to the whole story. So I always have to remind people that we are not typical representatives of our cultures. We live far away. So in a way, our friendship has not, hadn't had to suffer all the stresses that it might have had to suffer if we were back in Jerusalem or, yeah. or Palestine or Israel. You know, it, it's, it's a very different kind of relationship, but we just became very good friends. Could you have done this joint enterprise, a Jew and an Arab, in Jerusalem or in Palestine? I don't think so. I mean, we could be friends, but not, not business partners. With every suicide bomber, with every political crisis, it, it puts people to start asking questions, becoming critical. And I think yeah. for us here in London, you know, an international city far removed from the, all, the, all the strife of the Middle East, it's, it's kind of easy, but over there it would have been very difficult. Your book has been translated into many languages, but not into Hebrew and Arabic. Why not? Good question. I don't think we get enough credit from, um, from Israel and the Arab world. And the Arab world is a little bit more difficult, diff different than Israel because uh, um, they are very, very um, uh, conservative about their food and what they try and not try. And we break the rules. Because yeah. we take the Palestinian or any Arab or Jewish food and we kind of play around with it and make unusual combinations. And if you're a traditionalist, you won't do that. And the books have not been translated also because it's qu our relationship is quite controversial. Because, you know, it's a Jew and an Arab working together and creating... We, we speak about this in the context, of course, of these incredible divides. There's a so-called peace process going on right now between Israel and the Palestinians. We don't know where it'll lead. For peace, you have to understand the story of the other. Yep. Do you understand the story and accept the story of the Palestinians and vice versa? Yes, I've, I, I have always uh, felt very strongly about the, the story of that particular other, which is the other that we've got, you know, our neighbors. And I've always felt very um, empathetic and also that our, our faiths are entangled, you know, that there isn't just Palestinians and Jews. It's, if we are bound to live together, so you have to make it work. And in order to make it work, you need to be very respectful of, of that otherness. And I've, I think part of the reasons why we have such a good relationship is because we're, both of us are not extremely chauvinistic about our culture. You know, we're, you know we are very accepting to, to others, all others. And so it's, come, it's quite easy. I don't need to make a huge effort to, get, to become friends with Sami because we, it just comes very naturally. 
And Sami, as an Arab growing up in East Jerusalem, do you understand I the do. history yeah, of Yeah, I do Jews? understand and um, I do accept the whole situation, uh, sadly, um, because I, we, we, I grew up in a house that, you know, it doesn't matter what religious you are, you know, as long as you are a good person, you know, you accept it. Uh, now that I went last, they still accept, but they, the, the life is so difficult that you can hear this kind of tone of voice every time they mention Israelis because the situation is not very nice. It's very challenging with a wall uh, that has been erected around Jerusalem um, for people, for Palestinians to conduct their daily lives. So in the, in the, in, in the past it, it might have been more theoretical. Now it's, it really affects everyday life, every movement. So it's, it's hard not to be bitter about it. And what do they think about you being partnered with the They're very with the Jews? supportive. They're very, very supportive. They wanted to, to hear that he's, he's actually um, accepting me and, you know, understand me before they actually say yes to him, which is very nice. So you had to get approval from the family? I don't blame them. <laughs> you growing up in an Arab household, yeah. what, what role did food have for you? A big role. It wasn't just food. It was more like a, a, a lifestyle. It wasn't just eating because you're hungry. Uh, they they will discuss while they're having breakfast what they're gonna do for breakfast, uh, for breakfast the next day, lunch and dinner, and it will go on and on every day. And, and the hospitality thing around it's, food. It's an open house that people can come in and go, and uh, we always have enough food to feed, you know, an, an army. And it was always like this. Sammy always used to tell me how his, a group of women used to cook in his house, not only his mother, but all the aunties and, you know, grandmothers, together for celebration, for Muslim celebrations. And yeah. that's the image I've got of, the, of your household, you know, a bunch of women cooking together. Yotam and Sammy, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Thank you. Thank you.